Thank you so much for attending WordCamp today. We really appreciate you guys being here. This is our first WordCamp. Um, hopefully it'll be the first of many to come. So again, thank you for being part of it and supporting WordCamp. Um, my name is Laura Hartwig and we're going to talk today about using Firebug and basic CSS to customize your theme. So any theme that you have, um, I'm assuming most of you are more like beginners. If you want to make changes to your theme, you're going to need to know a little bit of CSS to do it. Um, so first, my name is Laura Hartwick. I'm a WordPress developer for the MarkNet group. Um, what I do is change themes. So if somebody gives me a design, they want their website to look like this, I make it happen. So I'm going to show you how to make that happen for your own websites. Um, so today, for a limited time only, we will discuss uh, basic CSS terms and usage, what is Firebug, how to install it, and how to use it. So first, CSS 101. So what is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and they are what control the look and feel of your website. So you are all used to the WordPress editor when you go in and you're going to see um, this type of thing ab above where you're making your posts or pages. And that lets you change, make things into bold or italics, left justify, right justify, those kinds of things. But if you're wanting to make bigger changes to your site, the colors of the background or the styling of it, you're going to need to get into the CSS part of it. So um, this is what a style sheet looks like. This is a cascading style sheet. And this is what actually controls the look of your website. Um, so as you can see here, um, there is a, what we call the selector. And then for that selector, like this one is the header, each one is going to have the attribute. So luckily, the way CSS was written, it's very easy to understand what it's talking about. So this is actually going to be the bottom border. This is going to be the minimum height that you want it to be, the, uh, the width, the margin, stuff like that. So it, even if you don't know CSS at all, it's usually fairly easy to kind of figure out what, what they're talking about. And Firebug is, makes it even easier. So um, you've probably all used view source when you're looking at a website to understand how the website is set up or you know, what types of things it's using. So if you use the view source when you go to the website, this is the type of thing that you're going to see. Um, and especially for a WordPress site, sometimes it gets confusing because you're going to put stuff on a page or a post. And then WordPress kind of magically makes it show up on a page. And it's got your header there. It's got your footer there. It's got your colors. It's got all this other stuff that you didn't put there. It's all generated automatically. So because, um, because it uses the PHP and the databases to input all that information, um, with you used view source, you can kind of see what's really going on in the background and how that stuff is really generated. So, um, and these selectors that we're going to talk about, you can also add them yourself. They're added through your theme. So your theme will take whatever you put into your page and post and add the selectors, appropriate selectors, to it. But if there's a new selector that you want to add or it's not putting something where you want it, you can always add it yourself um, by just using this. So um, like this one, we want it to be red. So we're just going to put this. Um, CSS right around it. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. OK, so and this, when you're doing this, make sure you're using your text tab rather than your visual tab so that you can see the code, the CSS. OK, so CSS divs or divisions, how we separate different areas of, of the website, they're either called IDs or classes. IDs are something that are used once. Classes can be used over and over again. Like my just example that I had about using something red, if you're going to use a lot of red text and you want to just make that a class so that you can set it up as red, you can do that with a period. And an ID would be done with the hashtag or number sign here. So, OK, so when you see this in the Firebug window, uh, or just like the view source, you're going to see div or division. And you'll notice this one is a class. So when you see wrap, it'll have a period in your style sheet class. And ID, 
uh, title area. Like there's going to be only one title area of your page, so we're going to give it an ID so it's going to have a hashtag. So sometimes when you're working with the CSS, you'll, be, you'll have the right word and you're like, well, this is not working. Why is it not working? It's because you've either got um, a period or a hashtag instead of the other one. So just make note of that. So when you're in the, in the div, so that's what it's going to look like when you're using the view source or firebug. And then in your style sheet, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to have that hashtag or the um, dot, like I, like I said. Okay, so with CSS, keep in mind that when you're writing CSS in your style sheets, um, you're going to need the curly brackets after your selector and um, at the beginning and the end of all your attributes. Then uh, you should put each attribute on a different line. You don't absolutely have to do that, but it makes it a lot easier to read and a lot easier to understand what you're, um, what you're writing and find the code that you're looking for. And finally, after each attribute, uh, you should have a semicolon there. If something happens in your CSS, if your website's not showing up like you thought it should be, you may be missing a semicolon, and that'll kind of throw off all your CSS. So just uh, when you're coding, you have to pay very close attention to details. So those are types of things that if it's not working, maybe you missed a bracket, maybe you missed a semicolon, something easy like that. Usually um, it's not a big deal. It's just finding these little things. Okay, so to find your style sheet, you're going to be in the dashboard of your WordPress site and under appearance and editor, automatically your style sheet is going to show up. That's the default file that will show up. You'll see all these other files too. So this one just has a few. Sometimes there will be a length of your arm list of different files. Um, but usually if your site's set up the way it should be, um, this, most of the changes you're going to be making are when the actual style.css sheet, that's what, actually what it's going to be called. Sometimes if your site's complicated, you'll have other CSS style sheets and you'll need to look at those, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so, and a word of warning. These other files that you see that end in the PHP instead of the CSS, be, care, be, be very careful about making changes to those because just moving around a little bit of things can make your site be uh, the white screen of death, which you definitely don't want to see. Um, so, which brings me, well, and we'll talk about that making backups. Okay, so now let's talk about Firebug. Okay, so what is Firebug? Firebug is an extension you can get for Firefox or Chrome. Um, it's a free extension. It's very similar if you've worked with developer tools um, or the inspect element tool. It's going to be very si similar, but it's a little bit easier to work with. So, and it allows you to see the HTML and CSS on your site. So, it allows you to preview and test the HTML and CSS without actually touching the code. You can look at it, you can look at your site and look at the code at the same time and make changes, um, just so you can see, not that it will actually um, take effect. And even if you don't know CSS or if you're a beginner CSS, it's going to help you kind of understand how the site works, which attributes are being used. It's a good way if you see another site that you like and you want to do something similar to what they're doing, you can use this to find out what kind of classes and attributes that they're using and use it on your own site. So it's a good way to find if there's errors on your site, if something's not showing up how you, how you want it to show up, it's a good way to find that. And it's just a lot easier than the view source or inspect element. So, and it's absolutely free, no costs, no monthly payments, no hidden fees, no kidding. So, love Firebug. Okay, and so it can be yours, just install it. Uh, go to getfirebug.com. It's a simple download. You're going to need to restart your browser in order to use it. And I should have said at the beginning, I have all these files that are going to be online, so no need to write everything down. Everything's in the slides. Um, so to use Firebug, once you install it, restart your browser, you're going to either click F12 or just uh, right click like I'm doing here and use the inspect element with Firebug. And then it's going to bring up a nice window like this. And you see it has all your HTML on this side and all your CSS on this side. So usually it opens in a half screen where you're 
website you're looking at is at the top and this type of window is at the bottom so you can see both and work with both at the same time. So I like to use this uh, new button, uh, new window button so that I can have it open in two actual windows so I can see my entire website when I'm working. But that's just a preference. So you'll see the default when it opens up is going to have all the HTML on the left side and all the CSS on the right side. So you'll notice that the Firefox, the window, is, looks exactly the same as your style sheet. And that's because they're both the CSS and they're both be talking about the same thing. So, okay, so as you can see in this example, example usually there's more than one style sheet, style sheet that controls the look of each item. Uh, so here, the sidebar is controlled by the sidebar div, which you'll see up here, but it's also controlled by the body div, these right over here. So, um, so I've got my sidebar. And all these, so all these things are affecting it. Not only what I have in my style sheet for my sidebar, but I, also what I have in my, for my body. So it, it's called a cascading style sheet because um, more than one, more than one uh, selector is going to style it. If, if, you're, if you're, it's not specifically styled, it's gonna go back to the default, which is like the body and the H1 tags and stuff like that, so. Um, if you're looking and you're saying, okay, well, I don't see the color up here. How come I'm not seeing my font color? It's going to be down here. So, okay, so here we are. Um, the sidebar class is also within the body class. So whatever class is closest to that item you're trying to style, that's what you're going to be used. That's what's going to take effect to it. That is great because we're going to use Firebug to find out what CSS styles are controlling things and how to change them to make how, them how we want to look. So on one side of the Firebox, Firebug window is your CSS. The other side is your HTML. And as you see, you can just click on the little plus buttons next to all the divs, and they will expand open so that you can see um, what's inside each div. So you can open them and close them. That way you can see the whole thing or the specific things. So as you see when it's closed, the body tag is going to be affecting everything that's in that div when it's closed up. And then you've got your header tag and all that. So it's cascading. The styles are affecting each things that are within the divisions. The closer you get to the actual text or the actual thing that you're changing, um, that's the property that will have the, the priority effect on it. And now, the magic. So when you have, this is, shows how when you open up Firebug, it's going to be on the bottom half of the window, and your website is going to be on the top half of the window. So you, when you use the inspect icon, which is right here, and if you hover over the bottom here, like here we're hovering over this post, so you see it's highlighting this exact post up here. So whatever you hover over up here, it's showing you up here. And then the reverse is also true. Whatever you hover up here is going to show you down here. So you can see exactly what's, what is controlling what. OK. So, um, so again, here it is. You see I'm hovering over the top up here. And it's showing you down here which exact IDs are affecting the things that I'm hovering over. So it makes it very easy to find the correct CSS that you need to edit. So Firebox makes it very easy, um, and like I said before, this, the styles in CSS are very simple to figure out, even if you don't know any CSS at all. Font size, that's obviously going to control the size of your font. Font family, that's the font, the name of the font you're using. The color is the color of the font or, you know, whatever it is. The width is the width, so it's, it's very basic and easy to figure out. Um, so now this is one of the major things in CSS that sometimes it's a little hard for people to understand. So in CSS, we, have, we use what we call the box model. In the box model, you have your content, whatever it is. If it's a sentence, if it's a word, if it's a whole post, if it's your entire page. That's whatever your content is. CSS allows you to put padding around it, a border around it, and then a margin around it. So sometimes it's a little 
confusing to remember which is the padding, which is the margin, because they're both giving you space, um, making space between the different elements. But if you have a border, um, the padding is going to be within, within, within the border, and the margin is going to be outside of the border. Um, so, and if you're figuring out the width, say you have a sidebar and you want the width, you have to remember that, so say this is the sidebar is your content. For your strict width, you're going to have to add your padding on both sides, your border on both sides, and your margin on both sides, just like it shows here. So if you say you have a website that's 1,000 pixels wide, and you have your content is 600, and your sidebar is 400, and it's not working out, well, that's because you probably missed some padding or some margin. So from that 400 for your sidebar, you're going to want to minus out the padding, minus out the margin to get your actual number. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so, and this is, it shows how uh, Firefox actually does it. So the blue section we hear, this is the div that we just talked about. That's our post. So that's the actual content area. And Firefox highlights the purple is the padding. Uh, the yellow shows you the margin. Like I said, the padding is inside. The margin is on the outside. And then the gray line actually shows you if there was a border around it. So it's hard to see, but there's a... Because this particular thing only has... I don't know if you can see here. The margin is only on the bottom. You say zero would be top. Zero was to the right. And then the margin is only on the bottom. So that's why it's only showing on the bottom for this one. If you did have it all around, yeah, then you would have it all around. Okay, but this particular one only has it on the bottom, so it's only showing. Is the border always, the always zero? Zero, usually, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes. Okay. So, and if you forget, if you get mixed up, you can just click this layout tab on the Firefox and it shows you what's what and it shows you how things are added up. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, for me, when I was first learning this, it took me a little while to figure out the padding and margin and get those straight in my, in my mind. So, but it's right there for you anytime you need to figure it out. Okay, so editing the HTML. So um, most of the time you won't be editing HTML in uh, Firefox, but say you have a new title that you want to try out and you want to see how, if it's going to fit right, how you want it to change. So to do that, you're just going to highlight it up top so you can find out um, exactly where it is over here on the left side, which is the HTML side, and just find it, click on it, change it, and you can see it's changing right up here. So you can see, you know, do I need to make a shorter title? Do I need to make a longer title? If I change my title, do I need to make the font size bigger? Do I need to make it smaller or change the color of it? Um, so you can make your HTML changes over in this side. Um, oh, let me go back right. So, and again, just a reminder, the changes that you're making in Firefox are not actual live changes. They're just letting you see how the changes are going to look. And that way, once you've decided exactly how you want it to look, then you're going to go to your style sheet and make the actual changes that will actually affect your site. So especially if you have a live site, you're not going to be wanting to make lots of changes and customers are looking at this site and it's like, okay, what's going on with this site? It's really weird. Um, this way you can see all the weird stuff, decide how you like it, make it pretty, and then actually go in and then make the changes. So the customer is only going to see the final change that you make in the style sheet. Um, the CSS is very similar. To change that, you're just going to select over it just like we did before. And then you're just going to go in here and edit the style sheet. Like this time, I'm editing the color of this, um, editing the font size. And this, so you, sometimes, especially with the padding or the widths, you have to play around with it. Like if you're putting in a picture, you know, maybe you, you don't know if you want it 300 pixels, 400 pixels, or whatever. This will let you change, you know, play around with it, decide what looks best visually. And then you're going to go back in the style sheet and actually change this. But this lets you see everything. Um, right there in live time, which is nice. So, and again, so it's not going to affect that. Okay, so once you've, oh, you got a question? Yeah. I'm sorry, can you save that instead of having to redo it all over again? No, unfortunately, you can't save it. But, you can copy it. You can copy it. You can copy it. 
You could copy and paste it. Yes, you can copy and paste it out of there and save it if you wanted to. Usually when I'm working with it, I'm working on one thing at a time, so I'm just, but yeah, if you can, like they said, you can copy and paste it and do that. But um, this is just, you know, so you can go back and forth and decide things, and then actually when you decide what you want, then take it to the style sheet. Well, you can't paste it directly into your CSS. You have to paste it into a text editor first. Yeah, into a text editor, because you don't want to make sure no other, yeah. nothing's coming with it. Okay, so once you're ready to edit your actual CSS, you're going to go back to your style sheet, but before you make any changes to any files, Absolutely, back up, back up, back up, okay? I like to use um, V1, V2, V3 like at the end of the different files, so if I decide, oh, I liked how this looked on Tuesday, you know, and I don't wanna go back and figure out what all changes I've made since then, I can just go back and see, oh, okay, I have, you know, my version from earlier. So, and again, if you're changing any PHP files, uh, definitely have backups, so. Um, you don't run into the white screen of death. So, okay, so before you make any changes, back up your files just in case you decide you don't like it later. Okay, um, and okay, second warning. If you're not using a custom ch uh, theme or a child theme, you're gonna need to use a plugin because if you're using one of the main things like 2014 um, that you get from WordPress, if you make changes to that and then they do an update to it, all your changes are gonna be overwritten. So you'll want to either, one, have a child theme, use a child theme that you know is not gonna get updated or overwritten, or you can just use the plugin uh, custom CSS and you can put all your changes in there. So once, if the uh, if theme does get updated, all your changes are saved and you don't have to worry about those. Okay. Okay, so to find that um, plugin, you're just gonna go to plugins, type in custom CSS, uh, this is probably going to be the first one that comes up. You see it gets five-star rating, so you can feel pretty confident about it. Um, just click and install it. Uh, and once you install it, it's going to have, this is going to be a blank page. So under Appearance and Custom CSS, that's where you're going to be making all the changes rather than in your style sheet. So if you have a child theme or a custom theme that you've created or someone created for you, you can make them in the actual style sheet. If not, use this plugin. If you're not sure, use the plugin. Okay, that way, um, that way you have your changes and your your original theme is always still good, and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, okay. So when you're make when you're looking at Firefox and uh, Firebug, and you're making the changes in CSS, if you have more than one CSS style sheet, um, this is shows you actually what the style sheet is. And you can see these ones, they're all just the style.css. So they're all in my main uh, style sheet. Sometimes if you're changing something that's a plugin or something like that, it may be located in a slightly different area. So you may have to change a different sheet, but um, that tells you where the style sheets are. Styles are cascading. So the thing that's closest to it is gonna be the thing that controls it. This one has a, back, uh, a font family right here that's closer to it. The font family for the whole body is gonna be this one, Helvetica. But closer to it, there's one for the custom enabled that's open sans. So since that one's closer to it, that's gonna be the one that's actually taking precedent and actually affecting it. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, okay so you find your style sheet. That's where you're gonna make your changes. So first, okay, let's talk about actually making some changes. So changing colors. A quick tip, if you don't have Photoshop and you uh, don't have like uh, something that's easy to use the colors, you can install this little um, thing for your browser. Uh, and it just, as you see, when you hover over things, it, it'll show you exactly what the color is. It'll tell you the hex code, which is what you'll need in your CSS. So it just makes it easy. It lets you save colors too. So if you're going back and forth and using the same colors a lot on a particular site, um, it lets you save them, so it just makes it easy. Again, my files, um, slides are gonna be <laughs> online, so I don't feel like you need to write everything down. Okay, so when you're changing colors, like we were just talking about the cascading style sheet, you need to watch and see what all that that particular selector is going to be changing. So let's say I wanted to change my color for here, 
when I change it, I'm also changing these colors here. So you need to, it's one nice thing about Firebug that you can, you can see all the changes that it's making. So since I only want to change these colors, I need to get a selector that's a little bit closer to it than just the A uh, selectors. So in this particular case, the uh, post info is going to be closer to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this a little bit more specific. Um, so when I was changing those links, all these things were being changed at the same time, which we didn't want. It was changing A, which is a link. It was changing the visited links, the navigation uh, list items on the right, the H2 hovers, the footage, changing all those things. Um, so we want to be a little more specific. So we're going to go in here and I'm going to get the post info class, which happens to already be here. So I'm just going to add it in here with my A to make sure it's only selecting links that are within that post info selector. And then that would just change those and not all the other links. Okay, the background color is usually controlled by the body tag. Um, sometimes there's also an inner wrap as well. So here I'm just changing. You see I'm just going to the very basic, the body. This is like when you have everything collapsed. And when I change the background color, it changes this right here, the background. This one also happens to have a wrap, which is around here. And I know these are terrible colors, but this is just to show you how it works. Um, so, and again, CSS is very easy. When it says uh, background color, that changes the background color. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and once you make those changes and you find, okay, like I need to find and change post info, just use your control F key to go back to your style sheet and find that particular selector and then make those changes. The sidebar, so say your sidebar is on the left and you want it on the right or on the right and you want to make the left. Usually that's just a float. So you're just going to go in there, select the area, find this is the content. So instead of float left, we're going to change it to right, which will stick it over there. And then the same thing for the sidebar. So if you want to flip those, that's a real easy thing to do. This way um, will change anything. So, um, you know, even if you can do it in the back or not. So it's just good to know. So if you want to do that, that's one of the things you can do, move the sidebar. Sometimes when you're moving the sidebar, and like I said, um, you'll change the width. If you make the width, um, total width, including the padding and margin, as more than the 100% of the width, then your sidebar is going to drop down. So if you get into that problem where suddenly your sidebar is missing and then finally you found it's round down here at the bottom of the page, usually it's a width problem. So either you have too much margin, too much padding, or you need to um, make it the actual content a little smaller. So that's just a little tip. Okay, so fixing margins. So let's say you have a really bad theme and the text is right up against the uh, photos, which looks terrible. Um, we're just going to find that in Firefox. And you see the margin was zero here, so we're just going to change the margin to 20 pix, pixels. So when we do that, when you do just one number, it's going to change the margin around all of it. If you want to change the margin on just one side, you're going to need to remember this order. Top, right, bottom, left. So you can do the margin. You can write it this way for zero top, 20 on the right, 20 on the bottom, zero on the left. Or if you write it just 20, that's going to make 20 all around, if that makes sense. Or you, could, you could also write 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, it's the same thing as just writing 20 once. Or the uh, same two, two places as well, where it's like, it's like top, bottom, right, left. Yeah, it's, it's this order, top, right, bottom, left. And that's going to be for everything. OK, so yes, then, then it would be top and bottom, and then right and left would be the same. So yeah, if you want the same top and bottom and same right and left, I don't want to get too confusing. But um, yeah, you can make, if you see it shorter, and it's only two instead of this, um, yeah, top and bottom would be first, and then right and left would be second.
Okay, and unfortunately, it's just something you kind of have to memorize. Okay. Okay, so it's easy to make those changes. Uh, measurements, this is just a quick tip. Um, if you're using a lot of measurements and trying to figure out what size uh, images are, sidebars and stuff like that, you can download, um, oops, wrong. You can download this right here. Again, the slides are online, so don't feel like you have to write everything down. It's Wonderware Screen Roll, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the link to my slides at the end of this, so. Uh, and they will also be on the WordCamp website, so. Okay, and so, and what it does is it just gives you this thing for your, uh, your computer screen, and you can move it around, and as you can see, it tells you exactly what sizes everything is. You can have it so it stays on top of your screen, so as you're adjusting things around, you can see the sizes of it. So I just find it helpful when I'm designing. Um, headings, okay. So here is a very good tip. If you only remember one thing today, remember this. H tags. H tags are very important in the design of your site and also <coughs> in the SEO, search engine optim optimization of your site. And they are so easy to implement and I see so many people not taking advantage of them. Okay, so in CSS, um, H tags are just H1, H2, H3, H4. H stands for heading. H1 should be your page title. So you're not gonna really mess around with H1 too much. There should only be one H1 and that's your page title. But your H2, your H3, your H4, those should all be in the importance of that title within your page. So if you have a subheading and this is like super important to your page, make sure you put your H tags around that. And it, you don't even have to know code, just select it like you would, like you were gonna make something bold. Use this little paragraph drop down so here's, here you can actually see the code, the H2, H3, H4. But it lets you select it right here and then just select H2 and there you go. If your theme's set up correctly, H2 should be bigger, H3 should be a little smaller, H4 should be a little smaller. If it's not set up right, now you know how to set it up right. You go in the back in the style sheet, you put H2, you know, font size 24 pixels. H3, <coughs> font size 22 pixels, something smaller. Okay, so when, you're, when people, customers are viewing your site, they're saying, okay, this is important because this is bigger, this is a special color, something like that. When Google looks at your site, Google says, oh, H2, this is, this is important to this page. This is what this page is about. Okay, so super important, super easy to implement. So I hope you will be using H tags. Questions? Yeah, is, uh, if I wanted to add No, unfortunately, I, I personally don't know of a way to do that. It, there probably is a way, but I don't know how to add it right there. But once you add, say you want to add H7 or something, just put H7 in your style sheet and then you can use it. Um, just when you use your text, then you can just use your, your bracket H7 and bracket like greater than, less than symbols on the sides of it. And then you can just start using it whenever you're, uh, so. Okay, was there another question? Uh, well, okay, so I've never used H1 because, you know, you've got the title. That's the page title, yes, it should only be page title. But, but is that, like, in the little top thing where it says, you know, the title of the page, no. that's automatically H1? It should be, yes, if your but theme. I, I, never, I never choose that for it because it just goes in there yeah, your theme should take care of that for you. Right, okay. That's one of the things that's automatically generated. So you use <coughs> no, 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 no. H1 is only for page titles. Okay. okay, you don't want to get Google confused about, okay, you know, what's the, the most important thing about this page? So, yeah, don't use the H1 titles. That should be automatically generated with your theme. Okay? Okay, changing fonts. Now, this is a common question that gets asked to me because people get frustrated because they can't change it in their editor. Um, you can change it, but it's a big pain. So, <laughs> um, one thing to know about fonts is that unfortunately, the web safe fonts are these fonts right here, and that is it, and they're not pretty fonts. If you, have an, if you use your CSS and say you put in a nice, super lovely font that you found, uh, it looks great on your computer, it looks lovely, and then you go look at it on your friend's computer and they're seeing Times Roman and you're like, what is going on here? Um, if they don't have that font installed on their computer, 
they're not going to see that beautiful font unless you're linking it to somewhere else. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. So this in CSS, this is how your font is set up. So P for paragraph, your font family, this is your main font. And then just in case this, for whatever reason, font doesn't work, these are your backups. And it should always have a serif or sans serif um, at the end. OK? So, but thank goodness for Google Web Fonts. So um, there's a couple other fonts, uh, sites like fonts.com and stuff that you can use. They're all paid fonts. Uh, personally, I don't think fonts are worth paying for to use on the website. It gets kind of expensive. I'm not a designer. I'm a developer, so designers might disagree with me. Um, but Google Fonts has an incredible number of fonts, and usually pretty much whatever you're looking for, you can find there. So, and again, they're free. So when you go on Google Fonts, um, it's going to list all the fonts. It's going to let you select them by thickness, slant, width, serif, display, handwriting, all that. You can put in um, your title or whatever the, you know, your uh, information is right there, and it's going to show you exactly how that's going to look in your font. So it makes it so easy to find the font that you're looking for. Um, okay, so then once you find the font that you like, you're just going to use this little icon, and it'll take you back here, and it'll show you just what to do. It'll give you this import, and we're going to put this in the top of our style sheet. That means we're pulling these, this font from Google's directory. And then wherever you want it for the paragraph, the H tag, or whatever, you're going to put this. And that's going to be the name of your font. Um, if your font, as you can, it gives you an example here. And you can see it also has a font weight. So um, some of the fonts have a lot of different weights. Like this one has <coughs> bold, 900, 700, 400 for normal. So you can just put it in like it shows you. Oops, let me go. Sorry, go back. Um, so this gives you an example of how to put it in, and it's right there on the Google Fonts website. So if you're not sure how to do it, just follow their, follow their lead. Okay, super simple to do. So, um, so here's my style sheet, and you can see at the top I did copy and pasted those import things. And then down here, um, here's my font family, and it, I have the serif there just as a backup. So if you put it in right, then everybody's going to see it on their computer because it's pulling from Google, OK? Again, free fonts, so very nice. Um, there's the important, that's how to use it. OK, so uh, last warning of warning. If you have a responsive website, things are going to be a little bit different. You're going to be working in percentages rather than strict pixels. So your content will not be 650 pixels. It'll be 65%. Uh, your padding, your margin, all that kinds of things. So um, otherwise, as it shrinks, <coughs> it's, it's going to cause problems. So um, this is a little bit more than the scope of this particular talk, but um, usually at the bottom of the style sheets, they'll say they'll have an at media, and it'll talk about smaller screen sizes. And if you want to get into styling that, it's a little bit more complicated, but still you can still do it with Firebug. So uh, just something to keep in mind if you have a responsive website. OK, wrapping up. OK, so we talked about changing text color, sizes, fonts, backgrounds, uh, margins. Uh, so now, hopefully, you'll be able to go home. You'll be able to look at your website, make some changes. You'll be able to look at other people's websites that you like and admire. and steal some of their ideas. You know, I really like the colors they're using. You can go in and look and see exactly what the hex code for that color is. You can see exactly the sizes they're using, what kind of borders they're using, things like that, uh, and get some great ideas. And in case you didn't enjoy my presentation, here's some babies and kittens. So. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Any questions that I uh, didn't ask yet? Well, I was just wondering about there's the CSS in Firebug, but then there's DOM. Yeah, as you get more advanced, you'll be getting into that stuff. At this point, don't worry about that. What you need is the HTML and the CSS, and that'll really take you to everything that you need to know. Once you get more advanced and you're confident with your CSS and you're ready to move on to the next level, then those are there for you too. So, so that would be if you wanted to change JavaScript? That's, yeah, when you're working with JavaScript and the PHP and stuff like that. As you get more complicated, you. Yeah, you can keep can using. Can you do that in real time in Firebug? Yes, yes. So, I've never super nice. Uh, so. Yeah, 
yeah, so it, it has a lot more uses than what we're talking about today, but I just want to give you the basic introduction. Uh -huh. Okay, so my wife has a website that we're switching to WordPress. Excellent. So the thing, it, the, when she does like a blog post, uh -huh. it's way too, there's not a margin for order, but it's way too close to the sidebar. Okay, so now you know how to change that. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, I, I may talk to you afterwards, but I just, that can be changed. Ease very easily, she very easily. Making some changes, didn't do it. Yeah, do it. that it happens. Do it. That happens, but that's margin and padding. So super easy. You're going to select it with your Firefox. You know, you got. So, so does this, but where do I, where do I select that? So you're going to go on to the page where you actually see that blog post that doesn't look right. And it will change it for all blog posts. It will change it for all blog posts. Yes. So, yes. Okay, so yeah, just hover over it, look at it on a page, have your Firefox open, hover over it, Firefox will show you exactly what's controlling that, and just see if there's margin there, hopefully there's some margin there, you know, and it say it's 10 pixels, but you think 20 looks better, just change that 10 to 20, and then you know you can kind of eyeball it then, and say, oh, maybe it needs 25, maybe it needs 15, you know, then decide what you want, then you go back to your style sheet and actually change it, so. I, I, I want to see a nice padding on that. The key is to know where it is in the style sheet. Then you just use Control F. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Okay. okay. Oh. Come see me after, okay? Oh, sorry. One more. Uh, here's my slides right here. Uh, you can follow my blog. I give tutorials all the time on my blog, wpdecoder.com. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, and I promise it will be WordPress related. It won't be pictures of my kid. And um, Twitter and YouTube. I also have a lot of videos on YouTube tutorials. So please follow me, and um, I'll be around for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for attending my presentation. Enjoy your rest of the day at WordCamp.